Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So a lot of you requested a video on Captain Marvel. Kevin Feige recently announced that she is going to crush the rest of the Avengers in terms of power levels. So I'll explain what's up with that. There's just been a lot of Captain Marvel stuff in the news because of what's going on in the comics and then what's going on in the movies. You know what we should do? If we're actually gonna do a big Marvel family photo, we should introduce the newest member of the Marvel family. Whoa! The newest person joining us. Captain Marvel herself, Brie Larson. We get the picture. Yeah. Recently, Kevin Feige did a really big interview where he explained. Captain Marvel is going to be their most OP, overpowered character that they've ever done in a Marvel movie so far. Now, he was probably not talking about Thanos or about Odin, because the Odin force makes Odin one of the most powerful people in the universe, next to things like the Living Tribunal, Doctor Strange shout out, or like Thanos when he's wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. We know we're heading to Infinity War. It's likely that Thanos will assemble the gauntlet. So it just makes sense that she's the most powerful Avengers character that they've introduced next to the Hulk. Because technically the Hulk would be the most powerful character. But the things the movies have changed is they've introduced the Infinity Gems in ways that they don't appear in the comics. So the Vision wields the Mind Gem. It makes him vastly more powerful than comic book Vision. So the same thing will probably end up happening with Captain Marvel. There's just very few ways to make a human character more powerful than someone wielding an Infinity Gem. So I'll actually explain because they did that in the comics before Secret Wars. Doctor Doom did not have an Infinity Gem, but he was as powerful as someone wielding an Infinity Gauntlet. So that's kind of another thing. But just to talk about the movies, one of the people that's writing the screenplay Nicole Perlman, she was one of the people responsible for Guardians of the Galaxy getting turned into a movie. She already confirmed that they were changing Captain Marvel's backstory from the comics. So she gets tied up in a lot of Kree storyline. Even though Marvel does have the Kree, they appear in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. They sound like they still want to keep the Earth-based Avengers stories separate from what's happening in the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Thor movies, and outer space. So what will probably happen is is that Carol Danvers will still be an Air Force colonel, but she will somehow get tied up in the Fuhrer of Infinity War and gain her powers during that movie via Infinity Gem. Recently during the Civil War II storyline, we've seen her fighting Iron Man, but a lot of you are like, what if she were to fight Thor? Like there are a lot of characters that aren't around for her to fight that could probably put her on her ass. Thor does not have his hammer anymore. There's a female version of Thor. It's like a completely different situation. But technically Thor, like forget Odin, even Thor could put comic book Captain Marvel on her butt. There's a big twist with Civil War 2. They still have the final issue. So even though they've changed a lot of what's going on with the characters, there's a lot of weird Iron Man stuff happening in the comics right now. Just wait till the end of December, beginning of January. I'll do a video explaining Civil War 2, you know, the big twist behind it. But there are a lot of theories about how Tony Stark is still around without actually being around. They just want him to seem like he's not around anymore. In the movies, what I'm really hoping for is like a brief moment. If they give her her powers vision style, like he got his powers during Avengers Age of Ultron, that was kind of his origin story. Hopefully during Infinity War, she'll get the same type of treatment. But even in the movies, the Odin Force is almost, if not more powerful than at least one Infinity Gem. Now, assembling the Infinity Gauntlet is a different story because even if you have a gem, you're very powerful. There's still many characters that are more powerful than you. But when you combine gems, their effects stack. So imagine Doctor Strange wielding the Time Gem. He's able to affect time on a relatively planetary scale, still a very, very big deal. But if he were to use that with the space gem, he would be able to change time for the entire universe simultaneously. So in the movies, Captain Marvel versus Vision would be a relatively even fight. The big difference there is in what's going on up in their heads. 
Captain Marvel is actually an alcoholic, just like Tony, at least in the comics. I'm hoping they infuse a little bit of that pathos into her movie character because one of the problems with overpowered characters like Superman in the DC universe is they need to have some weakness, otherwise it just completely takes you out of the story if you feel like they're invincible and there's no conflict. Like Vision, super powerful with the mind gem, but as he explains to Scarlet Witch, he doesn't understand the gem fully and is kind of fighting it at times. So in the way the mind gem during the first Avengers film was able to cloud the minds of lesser beings, it also sounds like Vision might have some similar problems. And the other big problem is that if Thanos is going to assemble the Infinity Gauntlet, then he's going to have to dismantle Vision to do that. Really big weakness right there. But the thing is, is he's technically artificial intelligence, so you can separate Vision's mind from his body. His body can be repaired, so he'll be okay. He's like one of those characters that you could crush into a tin can, repair him later, and everything would be all right. You can't really do that with a human character without some hardcore medical technology. But aside from an Infinity Gem, there just aren't that many ways in the movies to make Captain Marvel more powerful than people like Thor or the Hulk. So in the comics, there were a couple human characters that did get more powerful than that, including Doctor Doom. Like I said, during Secret Wars, he became the most powerful character in the universe for a brief period. But the problem is, is that Doctor Doom is typically brought down by his own hubris. That's a very Doctor Doom type thing. You know, gain the power that you seek, yet you're crippled by your own sense of pride. The reason that Doctor Doom became so powerful is because he was infused with the collective power of the Beyonders, this extra dimensional race that had the ability to control the multiverse, but the big twist was is that they only experienced time in a linear way. So Doctor Doom was able to travel back along their timeline and defeat them. So power abhors a vacuum. Doctor Strange is there with him and says, I don't want all this power. I can't handle it. It's too much. But Doctor Doom, who loves power, raises his hand instantly. I'll take it. So he becomes the most powerful person in the Marvel Universe and collects the fragments of all the universes that are left over and turns that into Battle World. So it was a really interesting epic idea that they'll probably never get into in the movies. We just learned about the multiverse. They haven't told that many cosmic stories and Captain Marvel's origin in the comics is relatively cosmic. They've changed that to keep her more earth-based. So you can see like the movies are really trying to keep it as simple as possible. But just remember when Kevin Feige says that she's the most powerful character that they've ever introduced in a movie, that there are characters that are more powerful than her. It's just that they're leaving off that modifier, most powerful human character, you know, most powerful character to come from Earth. So there are a lot of cosmic entities that will eventually show up in the Marvel movies. We might even see Death because she was a big part of the Thanos Infinity Gauntlet storyline. So until one of the other Avengers characters wields the Infinity Gauntlet in the movies, she is technically the most powerful Avenger now. But let me know in the comments, if Captain Marvel were to throw down with another Avengers character like they did in the first Avengers film, like we had Iron Man versus Thor, we had Thor hit Captain America's shield with his hammer, what kind of moment like that do you want to see with Captain Marvel's character when she gets her powers? I just feel like there are a couple characters like Doctor Strange or the Hulk that she could try to punch. Punching is really one of her strengths. She has energy blasts, but one of the big things in the Doctor Strange movie was that they wanted to get away from people just standing away from each other, blasting each other with bolts of lightning. So when we see Captain Marvel fighting, what you'll probably see is something really down and dirty up close. She'll just be wrestling with people like Hulk or Thanos. Like Captain Marvel punching Thanos in the face would be really awesome. And in that way, they might choose to use her like Adam Warlock during the original Infinity Gauntlet storyline. It's just that he was sort of like the ultimate Avenger during that. So she might become the ultimate Avenger during the movies. But like I said, big difference between the movies and the comics. Captain Marvel in the comics is kind of like Marvel's version of Superman. But if there are any other Marvel videos that you guys want me to do from the comics or the movies, just let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'll be doing some epic battles videos in December when a bunch of other TV stuff goes on break. I'll have a bunch of extra time, so there'll be some fun comic book stuff happening in the next month. 
but this weekend there's new Rogue One, so I'll do a new trailer video for that next. Then we have Game of Thrones and Walking Dead and Westworld on Sunday. So I'll be posting updates on my video schedule as I roll videos out, but Rogue One will be next. And I almost forgot, Final Fantasy XV is coming out next week too. So if you want me to do a story video for that, just let me know in the comments. While you guys wait for that to post, you can click here for my Spider-Man Homecoming Carnage video. And you can click here to watch the big Flash, Arrow, Legends crossover trailer again. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in a couple hours.